Good afternoon, y'all. Hey. Hello. Welcome. So we'll give everybody uh, maybe a minute or two to join us that can, and then we'll get started. Absolutely. And Lori, I'll answer your question really quickly. It's totally up to you if you're going to do orientation tomorrow. And, you know, that's you can stay or you can not. It's up to you. But we'd love to have you. But your, your time's valuable, too. So totally your call. Hope everybody's first couple of days of school uh, in this new era of school, back to school, has been great so far. Yeah, we're gonna get some more people to log on. I'll go ahead and start introductions. I'm Eve Walker. I'm the digital learning and innovation specialist for um, four of the elementary schools, as well as uh, West McGowan Middle School and Foothills Community School. Yeah, I'm Alyssa Knight. I serve um, the other elementary schools and the other middle schools, so I'm at Mideast. Um, we're excited to have you all tonight. And I'm Adam Wiseman, and I mainly serve uh, McDowell High School. Hi, Debbie. Yeah, we're excited to have everybody with us tonight. I'll give everybody a few more minutes to swallow that last bite of dinner. <laughs> hey, Miss Sandra. Good to see you. All right, we'll go and get started, y'all. Um, if you have specific questions pertaining to Google Classroom um, as a parent, uh, you can type those in the chat. Uh, if you're on YouTube, um, you can add those to the live chat. If you're tuning in from Facebook, you may have to allow StreamYard to access your account in order to comment on this live stream. So uh, post your questions if you have them specifically about Google Classroom. And we'll do our best to answer those during this live stream or um, shortly afterwards. So welcome again. And Alyssa, I'm going to turn it over to you. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, that's what we were talking earlier about. We're tired. <laughs> it's been a long week already. and It's Tuesday. So we're going to um, get started and roll with this. So I'm going to go ahead and present my screen. Um, I'm going to work through a little presentation kind of that we've got going. And we're also going to share this with you in the comments so that you can look at it later if you want to. Um, it's just kind of a way for parents to be able to walk through this. So what you're getting ready to see, we're going to share with you. But you can also follow along. And I just posted that in our chats for you. YouTube and Facebook. Okay. All right. So I'm talking about Google Classroom and what it will do for you as a parent or a guardian. Um, so a lot of people are going, what is Google Classroom? You know, if you don't have kids that have been in the school system recently or or your new kindergarten parent like myself to this, then you're kind of not real sure what this is. Um, so think about Google Classroom as your child's digital link to learning in their classroom. It's the way that you can link their classroom in the building to their classroom at home. Um, teachers are going to use Google Classroom to share assignments, to share homework, newsletters, um, and much more with you. This is an easy way for them also to share links with the students. If there's a particular website they're wanting them to get to, they may share that on there as well, just to make it a little bit simpler. Um, but you'll often see this referred to as an LMS, which stands for a Learning Management System. Um, I know I'm guilty of using acronyms a lot for things and um, as a parent, if you're not in the education world, you don't know what we're talking about. So um, we try to explain things to you as, as best we can. So LMS will be a learning management system. If you have a child that's at the middle school or the high school, their LMS is Canvas. So it's a little um, two separate ones this year. Google Classroom, I think you'll find it easy for elementary. So the big question is, well, how do we get there? Um, Google Chrome will be the browser of choice for this. So, you know, you have like Internet Explorer, you might have Safari or Firefox, depending on your device. Um, but Google Chrome is what we're going to ask you to use. That obviously is what all the Chromebooks are um, have as their browser. But if you're using a different device at home, then, then you're going to want to download that as a browser. Um, and so once you go to Google, Clo 
Google Chrome. <laughs> um, if you will go to, um, you can do www.google.com or often once you sign into the Chromebook over in the top right hand corner, um, you might just see where it says Gmail or you can just click sign in. Um, once they sign into that, um, the Chromebook, then that kind of gets them in there. But your child either has already been provided with a secure login and password or they will be. It depends on when you're there for orientation or if um, this is not new to you. If they've done this before, then you already have that. So your the teacher will provide you with that information. Um, we'll provide you an email address in a little while that if you ever forget it or lose it, shoot us an email and we'll be able to help you. Okay. So once you're in to the actual um, Google Chrome browser, you're going to notice that in the corner you have something that's it's nine little squares and we call those the Google apps. Um, I said we refer to it as the waffle. Um, I have been guilty of calling it the Rubik's cube and kids had no clue what I was talking about. Um, it, Rubik's cube is coming back around. So <laughs> they're, they're getting a little more familiar with that. But um, those nine squares will be their Google apps. When you click there, you're going to notice there's a lot of little icons that pop up. All of those things are things that the students will have accounts for based on that email address. So they do have a Gmail account. Um, they do have a Google Calendar. They do have the Google Drive. And this is what houses all of these other things. So if they do something in Google Docs, it's housed in Drive. If they do something in Slides, it's housed in Drive. That kind of thing. So Google Drive, the triangle, um, is where everything is kind of housed under. Okay, and so a lot of things that they do on the Chromebook um, is saved in their Google Drive automatically. And so you'll notice that when they're working on something, it'll say changes saved automatically or changes saved two seconds ago. That's the, the a big benefit of a Google product. Um, like when we use Google Docs and things like that is things auto save. The days of me having to remember to go to a Word document and go file, save as, that doesn't have to happen anymore with um, the Google, which is nice. Um, and so you'll also notice, whoops, if you if they scroll down, Google Classroom will be one of their icons, and that's what we're going to look at today. Um, so that'll be there for them as well. All right. So the Google Classroom is the icon that looks like this. So it's the um, the yellow square with the little green looking chalkboard in the middle. Um, that's what I refer to it as. Looks like a little piece of chalk. Um, but that's the Google Classroom logo that you will look for on their Chromebook. Um, sometimes it's also on the bottom middle of the screen if it's on the shelf that's what we kind of call it down there um, occasionally it'll, it'll already be there these next two pages will kind of explain to you about navigating the page and we're going to look at that together in just a second but if you need to go back um, i think this does a really good job of explaining to you you know where the classwork is where to see your grades that kind of thing um, so i wanted to include that um, so i'm going to come back out for just a minute I'm going to pull up my classroom, which I should have already done, but I did not. So I'm going to pull up my Google Classroom. So I'm going to show you the teacher side, and then Eve's going to pull up the student side so we can look at it together. I'm just trying to remember which class I'm playing with. Demo should be the one I'd look at, right? Um, so as a teacher, we're going to be able to assign things to the students. Um, and it's going to kind of look like this to you. Either you're going to see a stream, and the Google Stream is going to um, kind of be where you see things laid out just in one big long flow, okay? I personally prefer to look at classwork because that has it broken down for me um, in a way that makes more sense. Now, you're going to notice, and I'm going to flip for just a minute and try not to confuse anybody, that we have asked... Um, everybody to set up their Google Classroom the same way similarly, which is going to look like this. So under classwork, these are set in topics. So this week, anything the teacher shares with you would be in the orientation week. And so here you will see some topics and things posted, um, some assignments, maybe like get to know you activities, um, kind of things like that. There might be some materials posted. Um, where the teachers might be assigning, you know, I don't know what they're doing. Um, I know somebody was assigning a seesaw all about me kind of thing. But this week's work and things you will see there under that 
next week will be week one officially. You will see assignments for that there. So we kind of have them all doing um, them set up in weeks. So hopefully it will make more sense. Um, that's kind of the plan with that. But I want to go back out to the demo so that even I can look at it together and show you a few things. Um, Eve, do you want to pull it up? And while you're pulling it up, I'm going to show them something really quickly. When you're in the students' um, Google folder and their Google Classroom, you're going to have these options available to you as well. Google Calendar and then the Class Drive folder. The Google Calendar will be where the teacher can, um, if they have an assignment, it will show up on the student's Google Calendar. It's going to be a huge advantage to you and to the teacher to teach them to use those calendars well. Um, so if I pull this up, I'm going to uncheck this one. So there's just one showing up. Um, so my Google Calendar is for that classroom. So I could look and say, oh, well, I have something due on this day at this time. I have something to do on this day at this time. Um, and, and so you can click on it and look. A lot of teachers are using this as the link to their Google Meets where they're doing the online classes. So like at nine o'clock, I would know it's math class. I can click here on the calendar. I can click join with Google Meet and I will be live with their class right now. Um, so a lot of teachers are using it that way. Um, so that comes in handy. The Google Drive folder would be will take you to class resources that the teacher's storing some things in there as well. Um, and I don't, there's nothing in this one yet. Well, there's a couple of templates. Um, all right. So Eve, do you want to pull up the student one? I'll stop sharing. Sure. And I'll be quiet. <laughs> Okay, so this is what it's going to look like when your student logs in um, to Google Classroom. Actually, I can show you um, all their classes. They can see all their classes on this main page when they log in. And then um, they can go to whichever one is their classroom um, that they're in currently. Or they may have more than one if they have a, a specials class that they're in. Um, or maybe they have a different reading teacher that's possible. But this is the one we're using right now. Um, and like Alyssa told, uh, mentioned, you've got your stream here, which the students see it the exact same way as the teacher sees it. Um, if they have any things with um, due dates, these show uh, the dates these were created. Um, if there is anything with due dates, you would see that here that's upcoming that's due. Um, and then they, when they go to classwork, they can see those um, topics which are should be week of and, and like the date for the week so that has it organized for the students as to when the lessons will be due when they're doing those um this one like like this one has a due date so it says due august 14th so you can see that over here to the right um and if it has no due date it just says no due date um and then under people, I can go and take you through this. They will see uh, their teacher and they will also see other students. So they can email other students from this page as well. Um, if they need to know like uh, uh, maybe something they forgot for an assignment and just want to collaborate or work on something together. So there's a way for them to see their, their classmates as well as their teacher or teachers that are in this class. And parents, you can also get on here and email the teacher this way. Um, it's just a, an easy way to find the teacher's email address, um, you know, besides going to the website. So, um, so do we want to show some, maybe some examples of assignments they might have, Alyssa? Yep, I'm assigning you one right now. Okay. Um, so let's hope it's coming your direction. <laughs> You might have to refresh. There we go. Okay, so Miss um, Knopp assigned an assignment called Tell Me About Yourself. And when I click on it, it has a, um, that's my assignment is to tell me or tell her about me. So um, I can, oh, it's a Google Doc. I'm sorry. I, right, need, yeah. I added one. Maybe it took it a minute. <laughs> how long that, yeah. So there's a Google Doc. So when I click on this, it's going to make a copy just for me that I that will be turned into Miss Cannot um, from just the student that clicks it. 
So if, you're, if your um, child is, is logged in, they're going to click this. It's going to have their name right here. And it automatically makes them a copy of the assignment to turn in. So um, I'll click that. And then I could type, um, I could add, I could add pictures of myself, of my dog, of my family. I could add in, um, um, you know, things about myself. I'm not putting my real age, but I'll say, I, I'll pretend I'm nine years old. Um, so, you know, you can, they can tell, uh, they can write a little paragraph about themselves here. When they're finished, it, um, Google, anything Google saves as you go. So it shows um, it shows it's saving as they're working. And then um, the last edit was seconds ago, it says. So it, you can see it's saving as you work. So I love that about Google products. Um, and then I can, when I'm finished, which I'm not going to write a whole paragraph right now, but when I'm finished, I can click turn in. So it says, turn in your work. One attachment will be submitted for tell me about yourself for assignment. And there's my name on it. And that's that's what I'm turning in. So it just gives you a little chance to see that um, your student, they can see that they've done it correctly. And then they just click turn in. And their teacher is going to have that now. So that is a nice feature about Google Classroom and all those Google apps. Um, the teacher can assign a Google slide that the student fills out which is basically like a PowerPoint presentation. Um, they can assign a blank document like that or a graphic organizer that the students fill in. Um, so there's, there's several ways you can use that. They even have quizzes they can do in Google Forms. So that's really handy. Um, and then, you know, just turn it in like it, where, it, where it asks on the button there. And then you can unsubmit. Like if you realize you don't think they did it correctly or they don't think they did something right, they can unsubmit usually and go back and correct something. Um, these comment areas, these are for class comments. Um, the teacher or the students could add comments here and where everybody can see. So if they have a question about the assignment, they can ask right here. Um, Over here on the right is private comments. Now on the right side, the private comments are just for that student and that teacher to, to use. So um, like Miss Knipe said, great job, you check your spelling. So I missed that. That's really fine. You did not. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're, we're going to say I messed up on my spelling and I'll say, okay, thanks. Please, please check now, whatever you want to say. And then when I send that, she's just going to see my comment. No other students can see these in private comments. So that's a neat little thing. Um, again, if you're if you have a younger child in element, elementary and um, you're helping them with Google Classroom, then this would be a great place to ask the teacher about assignments as a parent even um, on behalf of your child. So there's great communication tools here. Um, really easy to turn in their work. Um, so it just makes it really um really user friendly and here's the due date as well on these so when you see uh, when you open up your assignments you're going to see a due date right here too so i'll go back to the main page again for this particular class and what else miss miss Alyssa? what else should we share with them um, let me go back to the presentation for just a minute because I'm going to talk about the parent, got the parent and the guardian summaries. Okay. So I'm going to share again if that's all right. So if you will unshare, I will share. All righty. So as a parent or a guardian of these students, um, teachers can add you to access their accounts. Now, if you are added as a parent or guardian account, what that will give you access to is like a summary of their work for the week. It'll tell you if they've turned in or if they've not, and it'll show you grades. Um, it'll also show you what's due. So um, with the student login, <clears throat> You know, the students will be able to log in and do some things. So if you have like a kindergarten or a first grade student that's having struggling with this or even second grade, then obviously you're probably going to be doing a lot of the logging in for them. Um, so you'll be able to see both sides. 
but you also can have parent or guardian access. And what that's going to do is the teacher's going to, um, you're going to be able to share your email with the teacher and they will add you to the student's account. And then you will get an email from Google Classroom and you'll have to accept it. And then you can decide, you know, make sure you get the right one, and the right kid. Um, and then once you accept it, you'll be able to choose like the frequency of how often you get these emails. So it'll kind of look very similar to this. So you'll be invited as a guardian in Google Classroom for this child. If it's your child <laughs> or your, whoever you're in charge of, you can hit accept. Um, obviously, if it's not, don't. Um, and then once you do that, then you'll be able to set what the frequency is. If you want to see something weekly or if you want to receive something daily, um, just know that it, what's going to happen is, you know, assignments you'll see is they're, you know, posted daily and weekly. Teachers are going to be, um, you know, grading things as quickly as they can. They're having to extend some dates, you know, because you've got some students working virtually and some that are working offline um, that may not have internet access instantly like everybody. Um, so, you know, things may be just a tiny bit delayed, but you should see grades pretty quickly. Um, so that works. Now you can sign up for an account. Um, Google Classroom, you can get the app. It works on a desktop, um, just like, you know, if you were checking your normal Gmail, it works great on your desktop. But you can have the Google Classroom app, like on your phone. It works really well. Um, it works for an Android or an iPhone um, or an iPad. Um, you can put it also like on a Samsung tablet or something. So just look for the app in the App Store, whatever you're using. Um, it's the little, like I said, the little Google Classroom icon there. Um, it's a great way, like if you're having to take pictures of work to send to the teacher through Google Classroom, you can use your phone and do that. Um, those all work well, too. Um, at any point that you need to ask questions, we're hoping, you know, that you're going to reach out when you have questions. Um, number one contact is always going to be your classroom teacher, whoever your student teacher is. Um, contact them first so they'll know what's going on. And they may say, this is a technical question. You need to get further help. You know, if the Chromebook's not working at home or you have some, some issue going on with the website or something like that that we can help with, there's an email on here that will reach um, the tech help desk. And that's manned by um, all of us that are the digital learning and innovative specialist, more curriculum side with technology. It's also um, staffed by the actual technical help um, that know how to fix stuff that <laughs> I don't know how to always fix. Um, so they're also on there too. So we all get the emails and we all, any of us can reach out and help you. Um, there's also an email account for academic support. If you have some questions there that you need answered, um, once you talk to the teacher, feel free to use that address on here as well. And then the last thing we're linking to is the new website. Um, so if you've not been on the new McDowell County Schools website, I encourage you to do that. Um, it's new. It's, it's, it's getting there. They're working so hard on it, and um, but it's, it's it's like building a car. It's taking step by step, and and they're getting there with that. Um, all right, so let's let's talk about some questions. I'm going to go back out for just a minute um, and unshare for a second and see what kind of questions you all have. I'm trying to kind of answer as we go. I also popped Ooh. in down in the live stream. Um, we have an LMS which. LMS stands for Learning Management System. Um, so we have that link. We've set up a support page that has some documents on both of our learning management systems for McDowell County Schools. So that's another great resource that you may want to check first. Um, and then if you still have any issues or you can't figure something out, then you can reach out to us through other methods. But um, we did set that up to, uh, to offer as a first um, first resource that you can go to to find um, all the information that we're talking about tonight about Google Classroom, as well as if you have a middle school or high school student, we have some uh, Canvas support materials on there. Right. The other thing we've shared for you in the chat, and I'm going to show you really quickly, um, is the um, McDowell County Schools Family Expectations for Remote Learning. It, things are different this year, um, and so we kind of walked through this with you explaining um, some expectations we have with for, for families um, and expectations you have for us um, as far as devices and attendance. So a lot of questions you may have will be answered here. Um, you can go through here and read. And then once you get toward the bottom, I'm not reading this to you, um, if you'll fill this out for us, 
what this will do is it, um, it will allow us to send this information saying you have filled this out to your student's school. Um, and so instead of filling out a lot of papers this year, we're trying to streamline that process just a little bit um, so that you can do that. So you'll fill that out for us. If you've not, we're up to about 800 right now, so we're doing good. Um, but go ahead and fill that out. It's one per student. Okay, what other questions do you have? Uh, Shana, um, is the remote learning at the student's own pace? Are they expected to log in? Um, classroom teachers will be able to answer that best for you, but they kind of do have a schedule set for the day. So they will be sharing that with you of when they're going to be doing different things live. But we also understand that um, everybody has things that are going on to your student, maybe at daycare during the day or at babysitters or whatever. And, and so you may be doing schoolwork in the evenings and that's perfectly fine. Um, classroom live lessons will be recorded. Teachers will also have some videos recorded of some things um, that they want to share with you as they go with the lesson. So you'll be able to do that, you know, when you're able. So, yeah. There was another question earlier. I think you guys answered about the um, videos where they would be. So they're going to have the videos. The teachers, I think, are going to have them in a, in a specific area on that classwork page. They won't be like for the week of that. I think they're going to create a section for like videos and resources. Is that correct? Um, I think they're doing both because when they talked about it and, and I'm, I'm not speaking for the teacher, I'm, I'm speaking what I think is going to happen <laughs> yeah, um, is that each week, like if it's a math lesson for week two on Tuesday, they're going to have that math video link there. But then they're also going to have the videos in a video folder for you to go back and look at. But they wanted to be able to have it with the lesson so you can go back and look specifically. So they can find it like near the lesson afterwards after it's right. recorded. That yeah. sounds good. Yeah. Any other questions? Let's see. Um, will you supply Chromebooks? Yeah, we're working on that. Um, there's a, a backlog in the world of Chromebooks right now that <laughs> they're all coming in. Obviously, as soon as the, the world went to remote learning, everybody started ordering devices. And so um, they're ordered. They're not all here yet. So we're making sure that the students that are virtual learning um, have something at home. And then the ones that are in school, um, you know, if, if they need to share those right now, they are. Um, or, or just using them at school and not bringing them home, but they will have something. Yes. They're just not all here yet. <laughs> what else you got? We won't keep you too long. I know you probably want dinner. Um, is the parent a separate app on the phone? Um, no, I don't think it is. I'm sitting there making my brain work for a minute. I, it's not, is it? The other two, you're sitting there going, answer me. Yeah, yeah. yeah the Same Google app. Classroom app is the same. Yeah. You just log in as the student. I don't think yeah, there, the, there's not a parent app. Guardian summary emails, that, that'll send you if, you, if you have an email linked um, to your child, which... The teacher does that. They enter your email and link it to your child. So that'll send you a weekly summary. But but yeah. you're welcome to log in um, as your student into the into the Google Classroom so that you can can help them navigate uh, their classwork. Yeah, and it it can go on a kid's personal tablet as long as. Um, the only thing is we don't have the student devices, like the home personal devices at school. They have to stay at home um, for a number of mainly safety issues. So, um, but if you add it, if you're able to add it to the tablets, most, most anything can um, support the Google apps. Just you can add them on at home and use that at home when they're at home. So, oh yes. We appreciate all of you joining us tonight. And uh, if you have more questions, you are welcome to email us at any either one of those emails in the presentation that Alyssa shared with you. Yeah. And, uh, we will be glad to quickly, usually within within a day, you know, in a few hours, one of us will respond. So. Right.
Yeah, so Brittany, just when you look for the app, it's Google Classroom. Um, it should be able to easily be found in um, any of the app stores, whether it's the Play Store or the App Store. They're all going to be the same. Um, and as far as the attendance question, that should come up with the um, the student from the teacher. They should be explained in the attendance, but it's also on the um, the family expectations. <clears throat> You're welcome, Sandra. If you have a middle or high school student, especially if they are doing fully remote tomorrow at the same time at six, we're doing a uh, Canvas students um, kind of question answer virtual um, kind of uh, overview. So, and even if your student, uh, middle or high school student, is doing the in person uh, alternating weeks, it would be a good thing for them to tune in as well. We also on Thursday are doing a Canvas for parent um, mm -hmm. session as well, like we did last week. So if you have a middle or high school student, um, hopefully you can join us for that if you haven't already done that. Yeah, to answer your question about the download, if you're on the Chromebook, you should already have Google Chrome downloaded um, and the Google Classroom app should be already available there. Um, but if not, then if you're using a different device that doesn't have Chrome on it, then you'd want to download that, yes. And if you'll go back and look at the beginning of the chat, the link to this presentation is there and it'll show you about how to get on the Google Classroom again. Hopefully that made sense. Is everybody good? Y'all been a nice audience tonight. <laughs> yeah, we appreciate it. All right, so feel free. You can keep chatting if you need to and we'll... Um, We'll, we'll get to answering some questions if you need that. Thanks, Debbie. And yeah, go eat something good for dinner. Thank you, Christine. Yes. Thank you all so much. This is what we like to do. Yes. Um, so that should be good. All right. Y'all have a great night. Thank you. Have a good one. Uh, see ya.